Today, we are specifically getting into Trandifer and all of its other relatives in this video. Trandifer's role in the ecosystem is a generous ground plant eating herbivore. Trandifer starts its life hatching from small eggs and learning its mother's and father's specific calls. Trandifer, after recognizing its parents, will rely on them entirely for its survival. After about three years of this, Trandifer will have grown large enough to gather food for itself, but will proceed to stay with its herd until adulthood. Once Trandifer has become a sexually mature adult, it will either leave the herd by itself or be forced out by the other males of the herd. Typically, Trandifer will travel to find another herd with a partner, so in groups of two, three, or even four Trandifers. The Trandifers will call out for another herd and endlessly wander. This is when Trandifers die in their lives, this being their most vulnerable moment in their life. But if Trandifer is able to find another herd, then one of two things will happen. One being that they are accepted into the herd and will proceed to go on with the rest of their lives, most likely with this herd, or two, they were rejected. Due to reasons like lack of food, overpopulation, too many males or females, or the wandering Trandifer is so badly injured that it might attract predators like Lada Otis. If Trandifer is accepted, the male will go off to simply wander with the herd, protect the herd, and mate with as many females as possible. The females, however, will once every two or so years mate with only one male and lay its eggs in a small hole typically at the base of a tall plant like Microlignum or Lapisfolium and start the cycle anew. Trandifer's gray sensors are more focused on the sense of smell, but Trandifer can hear poorly. The arms of Trandifer are less used for grabbing objects, but more for self-defense and propulsion, using them to help float and move. Trandifer is blind, causing Trandifer to be skittish but calm. The lack of vision is also why males in the herd don't fight over mates, because the females wouldn't be able to see who won and who lost. Trandifer's third arm is used for grabbing onto trunks or stems of plants because as an animal that floats, randomly drifting in a random direction can be a problem. Most of Trandifer's diet consists of folium, bulbous folium, triplex gull, and other short or medium plants like those. The first relative is Kaeka Chaser. Kaeka's role in the ecosystem is being an apex predator. Kaeka's life starts with hatching from an egg and following the only adult Kaeka they can hear. In the beginning, Kaeka will have about three or four siblings, but in the end, only one will be alive. As time goes by, Kaeka and his siblings will receive less food from their parent and will fight over the food, and in the end, only the strongest will survive. After about four months of following its parent, Kaeka will grow large enough to fend for itself and hunt other baby animals and will scavenge corpses. But as Kaeka grows larger, it will hunt larger and larger prey. Once Kaeka has become an adult, it will hunt prey like Trandifer or Magnus Dens. To find a mate, Kaeka will emit loud calls and roars to attract females, meaning the loudest males get to mate most often. Kaeka's large singular gray sensor is used more for hearing than it is smelling, but it does both. Kaeka has the strongest bite force of any animal in this ecosystem, most thanks to the fact that instead of just being solid bone, its mandibles have bone and muscle inside, giving it a stronger bite. Although this all comes at a cost of being able to chew food, so as a replacement, Kaeka's mouth has many claw-like structures that slowly pick off pieces of flesh. Kaeka's preferred way of hunting is by locating prey and suddenly running in and causing panic. Although Kaeka is fully capable of independently attacking a herd, Trandifers can be both difficult, disorienting, and dangerous, so on rare occasions, multiple Kaekas will band together and attack a herd of Trandifers. They typically run in and scare the Trandifers and listen for a separated Trandifer and will instantly attack the said Trandifer. Although if Kaeka does hunt in a group, there's a chance that 1. Kaeka won't get any Trandifers and the other Kaekas will not share or two, the others will attack and accidentally kill the other Kaekas thanks to the fact that Kaeka is blind. Instead of the third arm Trandifer has, Kaeka has three claws that they use to help stop prey. The next relative is Akuda Palmus. Akuda's role in the ecosystem is eating the taller and stronger plants in the cup. Akuda is very similar to Trandifer. Akuda will start its life in a small hole with only one to two other siblings. Their mother will bring them food to eat and their father will protect them, but this will only happen for about four weeks to a month. After the father will have left, the baby Akudas will have only grown their blades and their mother will bring them out of the hole and let them follow her for about another two to three weeks. In this time, the young Akuda will learn about the world around them and what plants they should and should not eat. After the mentioned two to three weeks of following their mother, Akuda will leave and simply grow into an adult. 
Although a coup to childhood is dangerous, adulthood is very easy in comparison to something like Trandifer. They are solitary, meaning they do not travel in herds and only are on their own. And they are herbivorous and can eat almost any plant in the cup. The large blades on Akuda's hands are mostly used for self-defense, but can be used for cutting plants if necessary. Akuda actually sleeps a lot, getting between 11 to 13 hours of sleep. Akuda is the largest Trandifer relative. The next relative is Longa auris. Longa's role in the ecosystem is a semi-arid environment herbivore. Longa's life starts when hatching from an egg, and there will be no siblings or parents around to help, only being protected by a layer of leaves and stems which Longa will proceed to eat. After that, it will simply wander around and grow, eating plants, hiding from predators, and staying close to larger herbivores like Multis chele or Acuda palmus. When Longa gets to adulthood and it will try to mate, it will search for a mating group which consists of many males battling to earn females. Longa will have to fight another male to earn the right to mate. It has the best hearing in the cup, but not only by making its gray sensors much longer, but also adding more segments. This also means Longa has a good sense of smell. Longa is the only Trandifer relative with eyes able to see orange, yellow, and multiple varieties of blue. Longa, although it has the longest lifespan in the Trandifer family, it has the shortest amount of time between hatching and adulthood. The final relative of Trandifer is Suki Cebolus. Suki's role in the ecosystem is being a pollinator and small prey. Suki's life starts by hatching inside of the flower of Delicus Floris that will rely entirely on this plant for food and shelter. After Suki gets about a quarter of the size of an adult, it and its usually four to six other siblings will attempt to fly away from the flower to find their own. But usually two or three will soon return to the flower and end up fighting over who gets the flower. After about four months of leaving the original flower, Suki will become a sexually mature adult and become full size. To mate, a male Suki Cebolus will simply wait inside of a Delicus and wait for a female to fly by. Suki is the only Trandifer relative to have no gray sensors, but instead has six hair-like sensors more like Pantanelitas. The first pair is used more for smell for a Delicus Floris, but the last two are dedicated for hearing. Suki is the only animal in the ecosystem to fly, using pockets in its body, a membrane, and a large release of energy it will float in a similar way to hot air balloons. And that is all for the Trandifer Relatives.